Let's go to the word of the Lord together. As we close out the month of November and advancing the kingdom of God, part two. In terms of just my series in this. We're going to read out of Luke chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. And then Mark chapter 1, 14 to 15. We're reading from the New King James. And it says as follows. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Everybody say, within you. By way of introduction, when we listen to our speakers over the conference, and what an amazing speaker lineup we had, Apostle Peter DeFin, Bishop E.J. Moodley II, and Bishop Stafford Peterson. The one thing that stood out for me from all of what they've said from Thursday evening right through to those that were also teaching at the leadership workshop is this. The heart of the kingdom message is still found in Mark 1, 14 to 15. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Now if you read what we've read in Luke chapter 17 and you take this specific scripture verse, clearly the Pharisees were not listening to Jesus. They were not listening to his teaching and they were not listening to his preaching on the kingdom. Because in Luke 17, they ask him the question, when will the kingdom of God come? But already in Mark chapter 1, Jesus has given the manifesto of the kingdom. And that is that the kingdom has come and we are to repent and believe in the gospel. Taking the message of the kingdom, we are asked as believers to express the kingdom through the following things. We are to express the kingdom through advancing the gospel message. We are to express the kingdom through our act of worship. John chapter 4, if you go and read John chapter 4, you will see that Jesus has his most theological debate ever. Not with the Pharisee, not with the Sadducee, not with any of the Sanhedrin, but with a woman from Samaria at a well. And at the end of it, the discussion is around worship. And Jesus says, a time will come when you will not worship on a rock. You will not worship in a temple. You will not worship in a building. But true worship will arise. And what is that level of true worship? You will do it in spirit and in truth. So our worship is spiritful. Our worship is truthful. Our worship advances the kingdom. Then also we advance the kingdom and the message of the kingdom through power. The demonstration of power. We must see signs, wonders, and miracles. We must see it. We must experience it. On Thursday evening, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and Apostle Defin, we heard beautiful testimonies of people coming and in the spirit of our worship, under the power of the word, through the power of prayer, they receive their healing. So power advances the kingdom. Signs, wonders, and miracles. And let me just get Pentecostal for a moment. May you see signs, wonders, and miracles as you advance the heart of the kingdom, the heart of God's word, advance the purpose of God. May signs, wonders, and miracles flow from day to day, moment to moment, season to season. We advance the gospel and the message of the kingdom through our community, through how we come together, the community of believers, the community of faith. Last night we saw that in action. 
We saw fellowship over the last two weeks. And one of the things that we've tried to do this year is to bring the spirit of fellowship into the house of Siloam. Now some of you may say, but pastor, all we do is eat. No, fellowship is not eating. Fellowship in the Greek, if you look at it specifically and properly, it's speaking of having a common task. Understanding that we are in koinonia. God has given us a common task. And a common task is to build one another. Because in the spirit of fellowship, you know you are not alone. In the spirit of fellowship, you know you have a brother and a sister that you can go to, that you can call upon, that is busy praying for you, standing with you. Listen, my brothers and my sisters. I recognize in the spirit of fellowship, on Tuesday evenings, we have people that come to church and it might be their only meal for the week. But we are here we are showing them we care we are showing them that we're building the community of faith together we advance the kingdom through character our characters must transform into who he is and what he wants because if you read according to what happens in the book of Mark if you just go read Mark chapter 1 this is where John's disciples come and he says this beautiful words to them. He says that he may increase and I must decrease. It's our character that advances the kingdom. What advances the kingdom further is order. Order. That's what Bishop E.J. Moodley spoke on. Having the mindset of multiplication is having the mindset of order. In order we advance the kingdom. The order of God is not chaos. The order of God is not hit and miss. The order of God is given to us in his word. It's given to us how we are to walk. It's given to us how we are to engage with it. It's given to us how we are to build our lives. Order advances the kingdom. Unity advances the kingdom. Discipling advances the kingdom. Influence and impact advances the kingdom. You are called to influence. You are called to impact. The beauty of the Springboks winning. They've been saying it since 2019. The beauty of it is the influence of bringing hope to our society. Bringing hope to our country. Bringing hope to our people. The beauty of the makeup of the Springboks as you've seen it. Is the understanding that all shapes and sizes Joash can play in the Springbok team. Get small guys, thick guys, big guys, all of them can play. Because it's the understanding that we have influence as people. You are called to be influential. You are called to be impactful. You are called to go into the spaces and the places that the Lord has prepared for you to be his voice. Amen. How do you advance the kingdom? The final one is prayer. When the church prays. When we pray, things happen. When we pray, we have a transfer from the heavens. When we pray, as we heard Bishop Stafford Peterson minister the first service last week, when we say, let heaven's will be done on the earth. When we pray that there is a transfer from the heavens down to the earth, from the supernatural to the natural, and God moves amongst his people. So we advance to the gospel of the gospel message we preach. Worship, power, community, character, order, unity, discipling, influence and impact and prayer. But this is where I want to get to right now because there's two things that the Lord wants to release over this church. When Pastor Nino and I and Bishop set in the week to sort out the preaching schedule and Bishop is again on a mission strip and Pastor Nino said, no, Pastor A, hey, you'll have to preach. I said, yeah, I've got a word. I've got two things I need to say to the church. There's two things the Lord needs us to step into. And this happened during our 72 hours of prayer and fasting. On the Tuesday evening, when we were all together on Zoom, the Lord dropped this word in our collective spirits. For those that you can think back and remember on how we advance the kingdom. The Lord gave us a word that is in this season to Siloam to advance his kingdom 
and for us to jump into. Number one, the Lord said there will be a quickening of the spiritual womb of the church. A quickening of the spiritual womb of God's people. That's the first thing. Number two, the Lord said, there will be the shifting of spiritual mantles. The shifting of spiritual mantles. Because in the quickening of the spiritual womb, to preempt everything I need to say, the Lord is saying there are, there are two places we are on. There are some in Siloam that, are still, that still needs to step into the gifting. That still needs to step into the assignment. That still needs to unlock the giftings and the grace that's on the inside of them. There are two pots of people. The ones that need to have their spiritual wombs quickened. And the ones who have the call on their lives, Pastor Miriam. The ones who have walked with God, seen God. And now the Lord is saying he's shifting mantles so that you understand that yes, I have been powerful in this. But because he has found me faithful. Because he has found me doing his purpose. Because I have lived my life to the best of my ability in honoring him and serving him and advancing the kingdom. Joe, now he's shifting the mantle. He's shifting the power. He's shifting the influence of the mantle. That mantle that you've been running under, yes, has had your grace and the gifting upon it. But now the Lord is saying, I'm giving you double. I'm giving you greater. I'm putting you at a place that when the mantle shifts, I'm going to give you platforms and places of influence that you've been knocking on. So there's two types of people in this room online in our church. Two types. You are wondering how they do it. How do they get to do these things? This is your season. And there are those of you that have been running long, Pastor Sally. And the Lord is saying, I'm shifting the mantle. I'm shifting the mantle. I'm increasing your influence. I'm increasing your impact. I'm increasing your ministry. I'm increasing you as a man and as a woman of God. There are people in this room... Your mantle may be tattered and torn and dusty at this moment. But the Lord is putting his glory on you. The Lord is putting his power on you. The Lord is saying, I've seen your toil. I've seen your weariness. I've seen your heartache and your pain. I know you said yes to me. I know you've been running at full steam. And now the Lord is saying, this is your moment. This is the time. This is where I raise you up. And you step into everything that has been purposed for you. The quickening of the spiritual womb, number one. That's the first part we're dealing with. It's a season of new birth. It's birth of giftings, anointings, and ministries. It's birth of dreams and visions. Now, I'm not saying this. I want us now to step in. Now... Don't listen to me superficially. Don't listen to me on the superficial, please. You have to tune into the spirit right now. May the spirit of discernment fall upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord open your spiritual ears, your spiritual eyes, your spiritual understanding. May the Lord open your spiritual discernment and revelation. Because what the Lord is about to do for Siloam is going to shift this church into a different dimension. We are birthing new ministries. We are birthing new giftings. We are birthing prophets. We are birthing bishops, apostles, teachers. We are birthing pastors. We are birthing evangelists. We are birthing ambassadors for Christ. So tune in. The quickening of the spiritual womb. The word quickening is a medical term. And in the natural Quickening happens between the 16th and the 20th week of gestation. That means that when a woman first feels life kick in, 
That's quickening. It's a medical term. So at the, at the week 16, between 16 and 20 weeks, you feel that flutter. You feel the flutter. That's the quickening. That's what it means to quicken. So when we take that same word in the natural and we apply it in the supernatural, what we are saying is there are people that need to step into the birthing season through the power of the Spirit. Your giftings have been lying dormant. The calling has been calling you, but you have been afraid. The calling has been reaching out to you, but you have said, not me, can't be me. I don't have the vocabulary. I don't have the gifts, the talents. I don't have the credentials. I don't have the upbringing, nor do I have the schooling for this. I'm here to announce to you this morning, Siloam, there is a quickening that is happening in the spirit right now. And if we would just tune our ears and tune our spirits, I release over this church right now a quickening of gifts, a quickening of spiritual birth in your life right now you have to be unafraid in the next season you have to say yes Lord I hear your calling you have to say yes Lord I know that you've been calling my name you have to say yes Lord I feel it on the inside of me I know that there is a birthing process I'm going through a birthing of dreams a birthing of vision a birthing of understanding a birthing of a ministry that you've placed on the inside of me spirit of the living God quicken the spiritual wombs of this church the spiritual womb of your people quicken them right now break free nothing is impossible nothing is impossible when God puts his calling on you Nothing is improbable when God says, it's you that I desire. It's you that I put my gifting in. It's you that I'm calling to ministry. Amen. It's the quickening. It's signs of life. Signs of life. Signs of life. You are not dead. The enemy has been lying to you. The enemy has been telling you, you will never amount to anything. But you have a dream, you have a vision, you have God's hand upon you. And you cannot, you cannot sit in this anointing and in the spirit and say, Lord, pass me by. No, it is for you. Gideon finds himself in the wine press. The Midianites have got them in a vice grip. Israel can't move to the left or to the right. He's hiding in a wine press, threshing wheat. He's in the wrong place for the wrong assignment. There are people that are dislocated at this moment, not dislocated in limbs but dislocated from the position and the place God has called you to occupy. And then he's busy with the wrong assignment. He's threshing wheat for what? For food, for flour. Wheat in a wine press does not go together. He's in hiding because they don't want the Midianites to come and take the little bit that they have. But then the wrong assignment Wrong focus, fear, anxiety. Gideon says, are you speaking to me? Do you know who I am? I am but the lowliest in my family. I am but the loneliest in my tribe. My tribe is but the lowliest of all of Israel. And all Jesus says to him is, mighty Man of valor. Siloam, I quicken your spiritual wombs. 
that you understand there is no excuse that can stop the spiritual womb from birthing the giftings and the grace and the anointing and the purpose that the Lord has called you to. You may be the smallest in your family. You may be the most insignificant in your clan. You may have, all of those things may be against you. But when the Spirit of the Lord finds you, when God Himself puts His hands on you, He says to you, Mighty man of of valor, mighty woman of valor. I call you not for where you are. I call you not for what you are doing right now. I call you not for what your mother and your father did. I call you for a purpose greater than the name of your family. I call you for a purpose greater than the place where you are hiding in. I call you for a purpose. If that is you this morning, come quickly. If that is you this morning, come quickly. If the Lord is calling you and is quickening your spiritual womb, come quickly. Pastors, leaders, let's move. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I need you to come with me. Bradley, let's, get, let's, let's put it, let's put it in. I need you now to pray. If it's you, if it's you, if it's you. If there's gifts, grace is being birthed at this very altar right now. It's being birthed at this very altar right now. I want you to lay hands on them and I want you to agree. If you are standing here, you better start praying. Say, Lord, I receive every gift that you have for me. I say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I step into the spiritual awakening. I step into the spiritual quickening. I step into that, oh God, which you have purposed for me. I step into it. I receive it now. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Take it, take it, take it. Pray for them, pray for them. Come on. Spiritual, spiritual. Spiritual it's quickening, a quickening life. Life is coming into you. Life is coming into your gifting. 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 Life is coming into your calling. 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 Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, Father, that you are birthing. You are birthing a new ministry. You are birthing new gifts. You are birthing, oh God, a new direction. A destiny greater than their understanding. A destiny greater than what they have already lived for. A destiny greater, Father, that you are giving to them. Right now, unlock, unlock by the power of the Spirit, oh God. We quicken the spiritual wounds. Life come back into you. Life, 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 life. Life flow into you. You will do great things for God. You will do amazing things for God. You will advance the kingdom of God. You will advance in grace and power and in might. We quicken, we quicken, we quicken the spiritual womb. We quicken the spiritual womb. Sing to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Release your gifting to the Lord. Release it, release it, release it, release it. Say, Lord, use me, use me, use me. I want to be used by you, O oh God. I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you. We stir up the gift. We stir up the gift. Unlock, unlock, unlock it. Unlock it now, Lord. Spiritual wombs are opening. Dreams are being downloaded. Visions are coming. Visions are being seen. Ministries are being birthed. Ministries are being birthed right now. Ministries are being birthed right now. Success and significance is being birthed right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
You're going to do great things for God. You're going to do amazing things for God. You're going to do great things for God. You're going to do amazing things for God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perthing, perthing. That's a perthing season. It's a birthing season. It's a birthing season. It's a birthing season. Siloam, it's your birthing season. It's your birthing season. It's your birthing season. Yes, Lord. New gifts. New gifts. Impact. Impact. Influence. It's your birthing season. It's your birthing season. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. It may seem difficult. It may seem insignificant. We have allowed our pain to define us. We've allowed our pain to stop us. We've allowed our pain to sit back. We thank you, Lord. It's a birthing season. It's a birthing season. It's a birthing season. It's a birthing season. Thank you, Father. We put your glory upon your people. We put your glory upon your people. Spiritual rebirth. Spiritual rebirth. There is anointing upon you. There is a grace upon you. New ministries. We thank the Lord. Bring the young man quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, church, let's stretch out our hands. You are given everything you need. You have been given everything that you need. The Lord has provided for you in everything that you need. The Lord is releasing his grace upon you now for every step that you are to take. Young man, your steps are ordered of the Lord. It is ordered for righteousness. It is ordered for his holiness. It is ordered for you to step into the flow, the flow of influence and impact. The Lord is giving you a new mind. The Lord is renewing a new spirit on the inside of you. The Lord is saying to you the heaviness and the burden of what you have been carrying as a young man the Lord is saying you are being unshackled you are being set free and everything you need is in your hands everything you need to be significant everything you need to be successful everything you need to step into his order is given to you so walk with your head held high walk with confidence in your step Walk with favor upon you. Everywhere you turn, heaven is open. Everywhere you turn, the hands of man will be opened over you. You will lack no good thing. You will lack no good judgment. Judgment is given to you. Judgment is given to you. Discernment is given to you. Wisdom is given to you. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. How do we know it's a season of spiritual new birth? A few months ago, we started a new ministry. 
called Stronger Together for our younger couples in the church. A few months ago, we have seen the power of evangelism taking root in the life of our church. Yesterday, 300 people were fed. 54 people said yes to Jesus. How do we know? In the next few moments, in the next few weeks, I know that uh, architecture is being put together for us as a church to service autistic children in our church. We want to make it a safe space. We're putting together a sensory room. A sensory room for autistic children in our church. New birth. May the Lord raise up new ministers and ministries in this church in this season. I give you permission. Come and speak to me. If the Lord said to you, Pastor, there's a new ministry we need to start. Come and speak to me. Nothing is impossible. This is not a season we say no. This is a season we say yes. We say yes to everything. We say yes to what is possible. May the Lord download into your spirit right now ideas, inventions. May the Lord download into your spirit right now ministries that will birth from this church and impact many. But then can I go there for a moment? You heard me say sensory room. May the Lord ignite in this church people that will stand up and say, whatever ministry we need to birth, here's the money. Paul writes to Timothy and he says to Timothy 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6 I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands God has entrusted the advancement of the kingdom to be intrinsically linked to how we identify our gifting implement our gifting imprint our gifting on the agenda of the kingdom and how we increase our gifting. How do we cooperate with the Holy Spirit? Because listen, family, this cannot be done out of my feeling, out of your feelings, out of human strength. It must be done in conjunction with the power, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We stir up the gift by using the gift. We stir up the gift through godly discipline, which produces the fruit of the Spirit. I'm here to announce maturity in this church is coming. The fruit of the Spirit is being released as we use our giftings. We are not people that take offense. We are not people that shooting back for every little judgment and condemnation that we receive. We are people of maturity. You don't like us, you don't like us. We pray for you. You don't agree with what we do, it's fine, we pray for you. We don't now sit back and get so caught up in what people say. We are not people of offense, we are people of love. We are people of maturity. We are people that grow. By the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against the fruit of the Spirit, there is no law. There is no law. We keep the gift ablaze by not letting our spiritual selves grow cold, lukewarm. We fan the flames of faith by continuing to keep in step with the Spirit. Sign on every morning when you wake up, 
The first thing you are to say to the Lord is, Holy Spirit, take my day. Lead me today. I know I've got all of my schedules lined up. And some of us are very busy people. We understand that. But if the Lord is not in your busyness, if the Spirit of the Lord is not in your schedule, you will be weary and tired. You will be weak and you will find no joy in what you do. So I raise up every schedule and every register and all of your appointments that over the next month ahead for for the end of this year and from this moment on the Lord is in everything that you are going to do. The leading of the Spirit is in everything that you are going to do. Every business visit that you have to make, the Lord is in there already. He's prepared the hearts, He's prepared the minds of the people that you are going to need to meet. We stir up the gift by not quenching or neglecting the Spirit of God and allowing Him to thrive in us like a living, blazing fire. Let's shift now to mantles because there are people in this room you are about to take off. You're about to take off. There's a mental shift in the atmosphere. There's a mental shift in the atmosphere. I ask you again to tune your spirit. I ask you again to pray with me as we do this now. There's a mental shift. Let me not say mental. Let me say mental shift in the atmosphere. Because you have been running in your own strength. You've been doing well in your own strength. You've been giving it your all and you've been faithful, but the Lord is shifting the mantle. The Lord is shifting the power base. The Lord is shifting your authority. The Lord is shifting your leadership. The Lord is shifting your influence in your little world that you have been working in. Even with me, the Lord said to me, Adrian, in this little world called Siloam that you've been working in, do you understand that the kingdom is greater than Siloam? Do you understand that the kingdom is greater than a denomination? Do you understand that the kingdom stretches further than Brakpan? Do you understand that the kingdom stretches further than what you are doing every Sunday after Sunday, week after week, day after day? Siloam, I am declaring that there is a mental shift in the atmosphere. The Lord is shifting your authority. The Lord is shifting your impact. The Lord is shifting your location. The Lord is shifting your leadership. The Lord is shifting your influence in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is shifting how you operate. The Lord is shifting how you walk. The Lord is shifting how you're going to do the things that you have always done. You cannot go back with your old wine skin. The Lord is giving new wine skins in the season. The Lord is giving new wine in the season. The Lord is shifting mantles in the season. When we receive a mantle from God, it represents God giving us empowerment and represents that He's giving us an assignment. Anything that we can do effortlessly shows that we have a grace from God in that area and in that arena. Meldon, it may come easy to you to do business. Nigel, it may come easy to you to do business. Uh, Suren, it may come easy to you to do business. Donovan, it may come easy to you to do business. You are doing it effortlessly. You are doing it with the strength of what you know. You are doing it with the context and the connections that you've had before. But this is a new season. This is a new moment. This is a new dispensation. This is a new shift from God. Pastor Miriam, you preach effortlessly. You go everywhere and minister the word of God. But this is a new season. This is a new 
moment. Joe, you worship effortlessly. You worship with effort. With if nothing comes too difficult for you to do. But this is a new season. God is shifting mantles. God is shifting mantles. God is shifting arenas. God is shifting your influence. You think it's just business, Melden. You think it's just that is where God needs you to be. But God is shifting arenas. You see, some of us play in one space and one space only. When God said, I have given you everywhere you go, everywhere you put your foot, it's given to you. Every arena of influence you move into is given to you. Brother Jabu, it's not just in the medical field. It's not just with pirates. It's not just with the junior Bafana teams. God is shifting your mental. God is shifting your arena. God is shifting your authority. God is shifting your influence. God is shifting the mantle. It's not because you can't do it. It's not because it's effortless. Don. It's not because it's easy. It's because he's given you an assignment. He's given you an assignment in that business arena. He's given you an assignment in whichever sphere of influence you stand in. And he's saying, I'm shifting this mantle on you so that you understand that every assignment that he has given you has made the way already. Every assignment he has given you has given you the power already. Every assignment he has given you has given you the provision for it already. Every assignment he has given you is to make sure that you and I recognize that listen, now is not for those with mantles. It's not you are being spiritually quickened. No. It's you are given a greater assignment. Malcolm, a greater assignment. You've been setting the foundation for this church physically. Can I say this to this man quickly? His father is our bishop. He's our spiritual leader. But nothing you see here and anywhere doesn't come was not touched by this man. He physically draws the plans for what Silo needs to look like. Pastor Nino, I know you, the two of you, he fights with you all the time, you and Bishop. But he physically draws the plans. Malcolm, may the spirit of the Lord shift the mantle. It's not a physical thing anymore. It's a spiritual thing. The Lord is giving you the architecture through the spirit to lay the foundation for the things that Siloam is to do beyond our understanding. Even in Bishop's heart, it has not even entered in the things that God wants you to do and the, and the assignment that is placed on you to lay that architecture for us in the spirit. May the mental rest upon you and may it shift in the season. May your faithfulness in what you draw, may your faithfulness in how you lay the the foundation may break out Siloam beyond Brackpan, Santon, Eden Vale, beyond Randburg, beyond India, beyond everywhere we have been and where we are to go. God is shifting mantles. God is shifting assignments. God is shifting arenas. God is shifting influence. God is shifting what we have been doing. And it's not about us and how we look. One thing I want to want to share with you. When we advertise Silom Brackman, do you see our pictures there? Do you see Bishop's picture? Do you see my picture? Because it's not about us. And this is no commentary on anybody that puts their picture on the church. God is shifting the mantle of Silo for greater impact. The fact that if you take our numbers of salvation over this last few months, God 
He shifted. Now, a church like ours needs to now ask the question, Lord, we've been into squatter camps. You have given us souls. Do we plant a church in the squatter camp? It's nice to drive all this way to a building like this. But Lord, do we need a church in the city? Do we need a church in our townships? Do we need a church in our squatter camps? Where do we need our voices to be heard? Lord, do we need a church amongst business people? Do we need a church amongst politicians? Where do you want us? Because when he shifts mantles, it's about, Lord, where am I going? Where do you want me? Where do you need me? <laughs> Beyond where I am right now, and I am successful in what I do, where do you need? People of mental status is about where do you need me? That's, where, that's what we ask. That's what we ask. Will you make money? Yes, because it's effortless. Money will find you. It doesn't matter. It will find you. So then, it will find you. Mandy, it will find you. It's effortless. You've always been making money. Now it's Lord, beyond the money, where do you need me? Because when we talk of mantles, and I'm going to close out with this, there's still a lot to say. But when we talk of mantles, a mantle comes with power, Joe. Power. You see, Power is a thing that we have to be careful with. Even spiritual power we have to be careful with. Because spiritual power we can manipulate. And spiritual power we can manipulate God's people with it. That's not God's design. That's not God's purpose. So when God gives us power, he shares his power with us. And he says to us, I entrust you with my power. So for everybody that's shifting into the new mantles, be honorable with God's power. Be honorable with God's power. Mantles comes with position. Not the same position, a new position, a greater position. Mental comes with authority, also comes with protection, comes with respect. And mentals will give you access to three things. will give you access to places, it will give you access to people, it will give you access to things. May you be honorable in the places he's taking you to. May you be honorable in the people. He's giving you. May you be honorable with the things he's putting into your hands. Now, I've, I've been challenged this year in my own spiritual walk. And you know what I pray for? More than anything else, like Jesus prayed for? Lord, give me people. Because I'm learning. I'm learning. How to be friendly, how to be loving, how to be caring. Lord, give me people. And even when they walk away, you will give me more people. Because surely, if I do my job correctly, even if they do walk away, they walk away with some bit of influence inside of
Those of you that know God is shifting mantles upon your life, I want you to come. I want you to come. And if I gave you a word, you need to be here. This doesn't exempt you. It doesn't exempt you. I know some of us are thinking, oh, no, it's not for me. <laughs> you come. I know some of us may be a little bit shy, but come. Mandy, come. Gave you a word, my sister, come. If you know God is shifting mantles, come. God is shifting mantles. Pastor Sally, come. Pastor Nino, come. God is shifting mantles. As you raise your hands to the Lord. Lord, I pray over your people here right now. A mental shift has come upon them. Thank you for the power you're giving them. Thank you for the position you are taking them to. Thank you that right now authority is being given to them. Thank you right now, Lord, respect is coming upon them. Honor is being given to them. Thank you that right now, Father God, the shift of the mantle is making them see a greater vision of their impact and their influence. Thank you that right now, Father, as the mantle shifts upon their lives, I thank you that everything that they have been praying for, everything that you have placed in their hands, that in the mighty name of Jesus, they are honorable, O oh God, with your anointing. They are honorable with your gifting. They are honorable with that which you have placed upon them. They are honorable, Father, with the business arena, with the arena, Father God, of ministry, with the arena of civic duty, with the arena of politics, medical field. Wherever they may be, they are honorable. Thank you that the shift in mental right now is giving them greater spiritual authority that they have never had before greater spiritual understanding of what their assignment is. Thank you that they are asking you, oh Lord, right now, where do you need me? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Thank you, Father, that there is an increase of their gifting, an increase of their effectiveness, an increase of their power, an increase, oh God, of the leadership, the rulership, the reign that you have given them I thank you father God that you are giving new platforms you are giving new levels of access you are giving new levels of resourcing you are giving new levels of influence in the mighty name of Jesus shift the mantle shift the mantle remove all doubt remove all doubt Remove all doubt. Shift the mantle. Shift it, Lord. Shift it. Shift it. Shift it, Lord. Greater. You are being given greater right now. You are receiving greater right now, Pastor Eddie. You are receiving greater right now. You are receiving greater right now. Greater is being placed on you. A mantle is coming over you. The cloak of heaven is upon you. The garment of heaven is upon you. Righteousness is upon you. Grace is upon you. It's placed on your shoulders. It's placed upon your heart. It's placed upon your life. You will be impactful beyond the place you have found yourself. Greater assignments. Greater assignments. Greater assignments. Greater assignments. Greater assignments. Father, shift the mantle. I pray that you feel it right now. Dropping upon you. Dropping upon you. Season of visioneering is coming. Season of visioneering and strategy is coming. Season of visioneering and strategy is coming. Greater strategy is being unlocked for you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
But let's say you've been faithful before the Lord. The Lord returns his faithfulness to you in greater open doors and opportunities in this season. The shifting of his mantle upon your life is giving you access beyond your wildest dreams. It's giving you access into places you have been asking for. Places that they've told you you as a woman cannot go into. Places they've told you your connections cannot open for you. But the Lord is giving you an opportunity right now in this season that will bring peace to you. He's rewarding your faithfulness, the tears, the pain, the heartache, the stress, the anxieties you've been carrying about your assignment and why you are in that assignment. The Lord is saying, I'm giving you greater opportunities and greater doors and access is coming to you right now. In the name of Jesus. Before you leave, I want you to say, Lord, where do you need? Where do you need me? When you say that God is granting you the access into that new place. That place has been prepared for you. That place has been prepared for you, Kirti. He's given it to you, Kirti. It's yours. Take it. Step into it. The dreams that you've been dreaming about since a young child. It is a season of manifestation and fulfillment. It's yours. Access. Where do you need me? People are being given to you. The right people. The right people are being given to you right now, Nigel. The right people. The right people with the right heart, with the right character. The right people that will advance the call of God on your life, the right people that will advance your strategic impact in the marketplace. The Lord is giving to you right now, Nigel, right now, right now, it's coming to you. But in this next week, God is lining up meetings with people, people that you have been dreaming about meeting. God is giving you that people, people that's going to come and, and just take the load and the burden off you so that you can step into the mantle and the arena that he has for you. People are being given to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, bless your people. Rest your glory upon them. Shift the mantle. And as you shift that mantle, may they go where you need them. May they meet who you have prepared for them. May the resources be placed in their hands in your hands Donovan those resources are in your hands you connect this continent but you're connecting more than just this continent the Lord is giving you the resources for greater technology to move beyond where you find yourself right now Donovan the Lord is downloading new ideas and a different mantle upon you you speak with authority Donovan you speak with the rulership inside of you. Your voice cannot be denied. Your impact cannot be denied. Resources are in your hands to advance beyond this place. Growth is in your hands to advance beyond this place. The pain and the heartache of your mind that is in various places, the Lord is bringing everything together for you and Shireen. The Lord is bringing it all together right now in the name of Jesus. You have everything you need in your family. You have everything you need in your business. You have everything you need in your heart and in your mind. Resources, resources, resources are flowing in and through you to connect you to beyond where you are. Your imprint and your footprint is beyond just this continent. In Jesus' name. Amen.